Dear listeners, ladies and gentlemen, peace loving Muhammadan Muslims targeted as usual, unarmed, unsuspecting, and defenseless civilians in Mumbai, India. The world has already witnessed the mass slaughter of other defenseless civilians by the invariably cowardly followers of Muhammad. Bali, Indonesia, Twin Towers, USA, London, England, Madrid, Spain, Nairobi, Kenya, etc., etc. The sickening list can be recited forever. The terrorists are conducting their butchery in the names of Allah and Islam. So-called believers and unbelievers, please be aware that while the cartoons about Muhammad elicited mass protests, burnings, killings and kidnappings in many countries of the Muhammadans as well as in the West, not once have the same alleged peace-loving, law-abiding followers of Muhammad shown their disgust or revulsion at any of the above mass murders committed in the name of their God Allah and in the name of their belief, Islam. Their silence, especially in the Western democracies, where they instantly demonstrated about the cartoons with incredible venom and viciousness, is so complete it is deafening. Their silence speaks volumes about their lack of loyalty to the countries and peoples that harbor them, protect them, and feed them. As Muhammad said, silence means consent. Please remember and watch the videos of the enormous degree of joy and celebrations exhibited by the followers of Muhammad at the carnage of 9-11. They call themselves al Umm al islamiyah that is, the Islamic people. This expression transcends race, color, or nationality because it is based entirely upon the belief of these peoples in Allah and in Muhammad as his messenger. They consider any attack on any of them is an attack upon all of them. If belief is the foundation of the brotherhood of the Muhammadans, why are we so-called unbelievers so stupid as not to apply the same measure of logic to ourselves? Why should not any attack on any Christians be an attack on all Christians? After all, Christians also constitute one Ummah, as the believers in Jesus, as the Messiah. Why not the same be applied to all Hindus, all Buddhists, etc.? Why only to the followers of Muhammad? Why not better still consider any attack on any so-called unbelievers anywhere in the world as constituting an attack on all unbelievers? Why do our governments not act in concert with others to punish if not eradicate the sources that produce these cowardly and spineless mass murderers. We have amply demonstrated in our chapters that the source of the disease of Muhammad and Islam is a virulent virus called the Quran. This virus attacks the brain of the infected persons and eats away like an acid the cells that deal with logic, mercy and compassion, turning the host into a hate-mongering, war-mongering, racist and unthinking zombie the perfect clones of Muhammad's pathological narcissism. This virus is propagated by the mullahs and educators of Muhammad and Islam in their mosques, in their media, in their educational system, every day of the year, and especially during Friday sermons. Although the world has visual access to all of what I am saying at the click of a mouse, in tens of millions of videos showing these mullahs, the terrorists, and all their depravities in action, People are so mesmerized that they are utterly oblivious to the dangers observed as if watching a cobra dance before it strikes its unreacting victim. Please remember that the acts of terror conducted in all the above countries were perpetrated, orchestrated and or performed by followers of Muhammad who are citizens of the countries against which they committed these crimes. Loyalty by the followers of Muhammad is forbidden by the Quran to any state belonging to the unbelievers. The Quran contains 109 verses that call Muhammadans to war with non-believers. Some are quite graphic, with commands to chop off hands, heads and fingers, and kill the infidels wherever they may be hiding. Muhammadans who do not join the fight are called hypocrites, and warn that Allah will send them to hell if they do not join the slaughter. These verses are mostly open-ended, meaning that they are not embedded within historical context, in contrast to nearly all the biblical verses of violence. They are part of the eternal and alterable word of Allah, and just as relevant or subjective 
as anything else in the Quran. There are, unfortunately, very few verses of tolerance and peace to override or even balance out the many that call for non-believers to be fought and subdued until they either accept humiliation, convert to Muhammadan Islam, or are slaughtered. This proclivity towards violence and Muhammad's own merciless traditions have resulted in a trail of blood and bodies of millions of human beings across world history. Every single one of the following verses are addressing the so-called unbelievers and or disbelievers as the ones to be forcibly converted, subjugated, humiliated, or exterminated. Al-Baqarah 2.191 And slay them wherever you catch them and turn them out from where they have turned you out. For tumult and oppression of Muslims are worse than slaughter of unbelievers. Al-Imran 3.151 Soon shall we cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers for that they joined companions with Allah for which he had sent no authority. Their abode will be the fire and evil is the home of the wrongdoers. The unbelievers in this case are also the Christians since the concept of the Trinity is Kufr. Al-Nisa 4.74 Let those fight in the cause of Allah who sell the life of this world for the hereafter. To him who fighteth in the cause of Allah, whether he is slain or gets victory, soon shall we give him a reward of great value. Those who believe fight in the cause of Allah and those who reject faith fight in the cause of evil. So fight ye against the friends of Satan. Feeble indeed is the cunning of Satan. Nowhere in all the verses of the Quran or Hadith does struggle in the cause of Allah, jihad, represent a spiritual one. In every single verse, it is an act of war against all the human beings who do not believe in Allah and Muhammad as his messenger. And Nisa 4.89 But take no friends from their ranks until they flee in the way of Allah. But if they turn renegades, seize them and slay them, wherever you find them. And in any case, take no friends or helpers from their ranks. It is crystal clear that the followers of Muhammad are forbidden of being friends with unbelievers, and hence they cannot ever be loyal to the unbeliever states that harbor, protect, and nourish them. It is the ultimate act of treason or treachery. Elisa 5.33 the punishment of those who wage war against Allah and His Apostle and strive with might and main for mischief through the land is execution or crucifixion of the cutting off of hands and feet from opposite sides or exile from the land. We have repeatedly shown that it was always Muhammad who ambushed, waylaid and aggressed against all those whom he perceived as his enemies. Hence this verse applies to all pagans. Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, Jews, animists, etc. 80% of the humanity. Al-Anfal 8.12 I shall instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, smite ye above their necks, and smite all their fingertips of them. 39. And fight them, unbelievers, on until there is no more tumult or oppression, and there prevail justice and faith in Allah altogether and everywhere. This is another clear and unambiguous verse indicating that the whole of humanity has to submit to one belief system, Muhammadan Islam. Al-Tawbah 9.5 But when the forbidden months are past, then fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them, and seize them, beleaguer them, and lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war. Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day nor hold that forbidden which has been forbidden by Allah and his apostle, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, Islam, even if they are of the people of the book, Christians and Jews, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. Even the people of the book, Christians and Jews, have to submit in humiliation to the will of the followers of Muhammad when the Muhammadans conquer their lands. This verse is not constrained to the Arabian Peninsula only, but is open-ended and global.